welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm starting off this little build series for the JZX90 that I picked up, um, I guess, last November. I just want to document most of the things I do to the car, seeing as it's starting from a completely bone stock platform. It's an auto transmission car, so manual swap is a must, obviously. Um, that'll be the big one to start off with. I've already acquired uh, the transmission, the clutch, the pressure plate, um, the pedals, um, oh yeah, the flywheel as well. A drive shaft will be the big one once I get it uh, mocked in. If you're not too familiar with uh, me and uh, the Black Anvil Garage name, um, I started this a long time ago, uh, probably in 2013, I believe, kind of putting a name on the things I was doing um, to my older car, which was uh, well, my first, I guess, car that I was really modifying was the uh, my 2002 WRX wagon. Um, I'll insert a picture so you can see if you don't know already um, or don't follow my Instagram. Um, I've got lots of pictures of it on there. Um, but the first car was the uh, WRX uh, wide wagon. Um, after that, I picked up a um, 1988 Mazda um, RX-7. Um, it was an NA um, rotary car that was completely bone stock. Picked it up for a steal of a price compared to what cars like that are going for these days, but I guess that's kind of the market. And drove it for a full winter. Uh, ended up loving it a lot and started drifting it that summer and had a great year, but obviously the NA power is uh, was definitely lacking so I ended up swapping a uh, 1JZ uh, VBTI in the car with an R154 transmission. <laughs> uh, it was yeah a great setup cannot complain one bit about the car was dialed I, I had no issues with it it was uh, it was a great little car to drift and, and uh, to drive on the street because that's what I, I built it for the street but was able to drift with it as well. That was my goal for then, and that is the goal for this car now. So here it is, my 1994 Toyota Mark II Tourer V. Um, it's completely bone stock, other than, I guess, aftermarket wheels. Uh, had it imported from Japan, I believe in November was when I received it. I'll take you on a bit of a tour, kind of giving you the runaround of everything show you inside. And the interior, like I said, is the uh, blue version, which is uh, pretty interesting. Body-wise, it's in good shape. It's got a couple door dings here and there, but you could tell it was a daily driver. Other than that, uh, the rear bumper's been repainted. Not that critical, to be honest, because it'll eventually probably get a kit. So yeah, like I said, the interior is the blue. Uh, let's see if we can get the camera to focus a little bit better, but it's the power windows, super clean. Back seats are all intact. I do have the floor mats that are original. They are green, which I'm not really feeling the blue and green together, but uh, yeah.
show you inside the trunk. All the carpet and everything's intact. Lots of room for drift spares and everything else. Best part is the sound, nice and solid. Even has the original factory manual with a little bit of paperwork from some servicing that has been done. Obviously, Japanese. I have to translate some of this because I have no idea what it says. I don't know if you can tell, but even the book is pearl white, which is kind of nice. Even still has the original road flare sitting underneath. I guess we'll pop the hood, show you what that looks like. Here it is. Like I said, all the original, nothing's been touched. No uh, boost controllers, no sketchy wiring. It's very nice to have. Start from a very fresh platform. One thing I noticed, it's missing the battery tie down. I guess when they uh, shipped it, it probably got put aside and never got thrown back into the car. Other than that, it's pretty damn good. I'm very excited to start working on this thing. Lots of cool little things ready for it.